Hello, everybody. My name is Cheryl Dowd. I'm the Senior Director for the State Authorization Network and WCET Policy Innovations. I'm here with my colleague, Jana Walzer-Smith, to be able to talk to you all about the Sensational Awards for 2022. Specifically, we get to discuss the uh, wonderful new project that was developed by Utah Tech University. So what is a Sensational Award? Well, it was established in 2015. It's an annual award that recognizes the outstanding efforts by SAN member institutions and organizations in developing high quality comprehensive solutions to challenging state authorization issues. So in a step, we, they establish processes and procedures to support compliance. And this requires creativity and vision by these staff members. The compliance staff must understand the problem, conceptualize tools or procedures to address the problem, and then mobilize their campus communities to buy in and collaborate on procedures which support compliance with state and federal rules intended to best support educational opportunities and students. So we're excited today, as I said, to talk with um, our colleague at Utah Tech University, who is a 2022 Sensational Award winner in the, the category of Compliance Innovation. This category calls on SAN members to share institutional policies, tools, and inventive or novel compliance management practices to help solve this tricky compliance issue. So our colleague from Utah Tech University will share the institution's award-winning project that facilitates the development of a database to automate required notifications for programs that lead to a professional license or certification. So as we all know, the US Department of Education federal regulations require that in order for an institution uh, to participate in Title IV federal financial aid, the institution must provide public and individual notifications for educational programs that lead to a professional license or certification required for employment or in, for an occupation in a state. So to achieve this, Utah Tech University developed a process leveraging their existing student information system to create a new professional license database table. So I'm so pleased to uh, introduce Mark Adkins. He is the State Authorization and Professional Licensure Coordinator to share more details about Utah Tech's plan to utilize an existing resource at the institution and build upon it to manage distributions of required notifications. The tool provides a cost-effective, adaptable tool, which can be utilized year to year to support their 35 professional licensure programs, and is also a tool that can be adapted by and for peer institutions nationally. So without further ado, um, Mark, we're just really pleased to be with you today and to learn more about your project. Well, thank you very, very much, uh, Cheryl, and uh, thank you very much to SAN for recognizing that Utah Tech University for this award. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Can you see that, Cheryl? Yes. Okay. So as Cheryl mentioned, the, the project that we started was this automatic individual disclosures. And uh, what I'd like to do today is just kind of uh, go through the process I went through um, from start to finish on building this, this database as well as actually looking at the live database so you can kind of get a sense of what it does. So before we get started, a little bit about uh, Utah Tech University. We're located in uh, St. George, Utah. Uh, if you don't, uh, that name doesn't uh, ring a bell to you. It's because we changed our, our name on July 1st of this year. It was formerly Dixie State University. We are a four-year public university, and our full enrollment was just a little over 12,500 uh, this, uh, this current fall. We have over 200 programs of study, anywhere from certifications, associate degrees, bachelor's degrees, and master's degrees. And of those, 34 have been designated as professional licensure programs. Um, here's my challenge. So when I took over um, in, in, obviously in the spring of, of 2021, uh, they, they put out a request for this position. Obviously, the, the federal regulations of 2019 uh, had an implementation date of um, July 1st of 2020. Well, in the spring of 2021, uh, at, at the time, Dixie State University realized that they were non-compliant in this. In fact, they had actually had done nothing. And so they hired me um, on April 1st of, of 2021. 
and 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 I don't have a professional license or background, so this picture down here kind of gives you an indication of uh, how I felt on the very first day uh, of the job. But I, I dove right in. So here's how I got started, and uh, thankfully I had a mentor, and my mentor is Sherry Melton at Weber State University. Uh, she was invaluable, and she actually created this this exact same database. Uh, what what I, I what I replicated. So. Uh, I was able to lean on her and her team to kind of, she had already kind of walked through all this stuff and kind of figured out all the lessons learned and stuff like that. So she was invaluable to this, as well as the folks at SAN. So I, I just dove in. I, I was reading the forums, the blogs, webinars, and I went to the SAN basic workshop. Uh, just a, a wealth of information, a great community. So if you have any questions, uh, they're there to help. And another document that I found, I just kind of stumbled onto it was his professional licensure disclosure, the, the handbook written by Sherry Miller. And, and for some reason, just kind of spoke to me, just it was almost a roadmap of exactly what I need to do to, to pull this thing off. And so if, if you haven't read that, I would surely uh, recommend people read that. But I probably have read it 10 times, just kind of, and it just kind of, kind of set everything, what I need to do to complete this. So the first thing we did was uh, we started with the high level requirements. What do we want this thing to do? So we're talking about individual uh, disclosure emails. And so what I really started with was kind of started with the end of the mind. So I, I envisioned what the email was going to look like. And from that, I, I, I found out what all the data elements that were needed for that email. Okay? And then I mapped all those out. Some we already had in Banner and some we had to create. Okay. Also, another high-level requirement is how to integrate with Banner. Banner is our student information system. So we had to use that as our, as our starting point. And like Cheryl mentioned, uh, within Banner, we created a unique table just for professional action disclosure. And so in there, we had to provide, um, obviously every program of study had to be recognized and then the state and the determination status for each of those. So the meets does not meet undetermined. Additionally, we had additional fields. And this what came from Sherry, a tip from Sherry was um, besides just the um, determination status, we want to be able to be flexible for the future and so we create these additional fields and you'll see that when we look at the database. Um, so currently we're using two of those data fields, uh, the state contact and the state contact link. We actually have a total of eight. And so the tip I would give anyone if they're gonna go down this road is actually create more data tables or data uh, uh, fields than you actually need. And the reason for that, it gives you a lot more flexibility. So you don't know what the requirements are gonna be down in the future. You know, the federal regulators might change their mind again on something. And as long as you have a lot more flexibility in your database, you're able to, to adapt to that. Also, we had to be able to assign a program director to a program uh, of study. We'll see that in the email as well. But then the last part is you need to be able to be able to search or archive all the emails that were sent out. And this is really kind of magic of the entire database. So we're able to put in a student's ID and kind of determine exactly all the emails that have ever been sent out for that student. And it's pretty powerful. So what I did is after we had these high level requirements, uh, I, rec I uh, created a, a, an IT or requirements document, put all that together. And then I approached our, our folks at uh, Information Technology about doing this. Luckily, I had two things going for me when that project, um, first of all, I worked for the provost. Uh, so I had his backing, which is very nice. But secondly, because we were not compliant and uh, obviously the jeopardy, the 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 uh, uh, Title IV, the federal uh, federal financial aid was in jeopardy, uh, our project got high priority. So we actually went to the very top of the list for IT. And the folks at IT were very gracious. They assigned me one person, his name's Tyson Smith, to actually work. So between myself and Tyson, we worked on the project together. So when we created the database, when all was said and done, the way the database works is it's it's, it's basically just kind of listening at all times. And there's four triggers that will generate an email. And these are the four triggers. So at the start of the semester, the fall and the spring, approximately about three weeks in the semester, everyone gets a, an email. So whether if you're in a professional licensure program, even if your program meets all the requirements and you're sitting in the state of Utah and everything's everything's good, we still send it out to all students so they get a sense of they're in a professional licensure program. The second trigger uh, was entry into a professional licensure program via banner. So 
Uh, for example, uh, when, when students first come here, they might be interested in being a nurse. When they first start off, they're not in the nursing uh, program of study. They're usually like biology or chemistry or something like that. And then when they get accepted into the nursing program, their advisor will change them into nursing. And when that happens, all of a sudden they're recognized in a professional action program. The, the database recognizes that and sends them an email. The third one is a change in student's location. Uh, this is where they're physically taking classes. Um, and we define that really where, where they put their head down on the pillow every night. That's, that's kind of where, where we define the physical state. Uh, one thing that came out about this was when I was going through this process, we as a university did not have a policy on student location. So I had to create a policy um, that had to go through the Board of Trustees and get that approved. So that was that was a win. But also, uh, the students were not required to update their student location. So we were able to interject ourselves into the registration process. So every semester before they register for classes, one of the questions that ask them is what their student location is. And the student has to define that. And so uh, that was another big win. And the last trigger is uh, determination status for the program of study. So again, back to our nursing example of uh, say in the state of Indiana, it goes from meets to does not meet, that would automatically trigger an email. So those four triggers are, like I said, just kind of always sitting out there listening um, to uh, one of these things to happen. So let's go ahead and let's look at the database itself. Um, so here's the database, and like I said, um, we created our own uh, table over here. It's called the Licensure Compliance Database. If I click on that, there's only three tabs. I know it doesn't look very impressive up front, but this is it. And uh, we're going to look at just the Programs tab here. I can't look at the directors or the student email because this actually is the live database. Uh, but let's look at the Programs one. So if I hit this one, it says Add a Program. These are all the various programs to study at Utah Tech University, okay? And what I want to do is um, when I want to add a new, new program, so this one over here, these are all the ones that I've imported into our professional license database, okay? And so let's say I want to look at, um, let's say, um, dental hygiene right here. So if I click on this and I expand it, so here I have all the states, as well as the District of Columbia and five U.S. Uh, territories uh, for dental hygiene, right? Here's all the states. Here's their status, meets, undetermined, does not meet, whatever it is. Uh, and then here are the eight data fields over here. Uh, like I said, we're only using two of these at this time, state contact and state contact link. But I have the ability to input more information in the future if I want to. But if I want to make a change, so I want to go to a New Jersey, I can click on New Jersey and then down below here, here you see New Jersey's here where my cursor is. I can change the determination status. I can change all these data fields. I hit save and it's automatically populated. Okay, So that's the programs um, tab. Like I said, I can't show the directors and the student email because it has um, sensitive information in it. So let's go back to the slideshow. And if I go down one, here's the directors tab. That's the second tab in the database. And so over here on the left, I have all the programs of study. And then each, uh, the banner ID or the, the student ID or the, uh, what we call now the digital ID uh, for that, pro that uh, program director. So all I need to do is figure out what their, what their digital ID is, uh, put it in here, and then it populates their name and their email. And I'll show you, that's make more sense when we look at the actual email that's sent out to the students. So this is how I'm populating the directors tab. And then here's the student email tab, okay? Um, the, the top area up here, these are the most recent ones that have gone out, but the most powerful part is the student ID here. So I can put in a student ID right up here. And then down here in the second box, it will show me the total number of emails that have ever been sent out for that student, okay? And then I can click on each one of these. So for this student, I can tell that they're a nursing major uh, and four, we have sent out four emails uh, for, the, for the student. I can click on every one of these down here and down below it, it'll show me the actual email that's been sent out, okay? Additionally, we created an organizational email uh, in Outlook. And so besides sending the email to the student, I get a blind courtesy copy in an organizational email that, that's a, a kind of a duplicate archive for that email as well. 
And so let's go ahead and look at the actual email that's sent out to students. Okay, I've placed, I pasted this into a Word document so it's easier to see. And it's in yellow. These are just highlighting the facts. The, the yellow means that we're pulling this from the database, okay? So obviously the date, their student ID or digital ID and their name, tells them that they're enrolled into a professionalized or program, talks about the meets, does not meet undetermined. And then down below here, it shows their current program of study. This, this student is a nursing major. They have defined their local state as Utah. And then from the database, we know that this is meets. This is all getting pulled from the database. Additionally, we, we give them a little more information besides just that. Uh, their permanent state is a state that they determine or when they first enrolled into Utah Tech University, this is the state they identified. Okay, So in this case, there was Idaho. And we know that answer too. Their determination status is meets. And then for, for reference, there are six states, fun fact, that uh, border the state of Utah. And we give them that information as well. Because what we find is the majority of our students do come from the state of Utah. But the, the other majority, uh, the rest of the students primarily come from one of these six states. And what we what we really want to give them is a lot of students where they, you know, if they live in, say, Arizona, there's a high, a good chance that that's probably where they're going to, they're going to move back to after they graduate. So we just give them that information. And we talk about, hey, if uh, again, this is all canned stuff. If they, they, if they change their state, what the impact that might be. And then uh, we talk about... Um, making sure that this all this is up to, date, up to date as much as possible. And here's the, the two links or the two data fields down here below. Here's the state contact information. So that's pulled in as nursing smart sheet, again, from SAN. And here's the state contact link right down here. So if they click on this and they were wanting more information about nursing in um, Missouri, boom, they could click on that link and they automatically get that information. And here's where their program director information comes in line. So it defines their, their program director. In this case, it's Judy Scott in the, in, the, in the nursing program and her email, okay? And so that's the, that's the, the email that goes out to the student. Like I said, it's pretty much a canned uh, email, but then we just populate it with the information that's currently in the database. So that's the email. So there's my contact information, uh, some quick fun facts it, uh, from start to finish. Like I said, I started April 1st of this year and uh, it took me nine months which, between myself and Tyson, nine months to complete. We went live in July or January, 2022. And since then, the, the database has sent out over 3000 emails, which is pretty impressive. Uh, again, there's my contact information. Uh, if anyone has any further questions or we wanted to get into more details about that, we definitely could. Uh, if you want to talk to some of our IT folks and how they did it, we definitely can set that up too. So we're here to share the information. We're here to share the product. So just let me know. And Cheryl, that's all I have. That was a wonderful presentation, Mark. Thank you so much. And not only have you developed this very practical way to address um, getting your notifications out, it prompted you all to uh, establish that location process. And right. so, you know, we've been talking about institutions, you know, needing to create whatever their process would be to determine location of the student so that it can be documented and maintained and um, applied consistently throughout the institution. And so I think you, you did a lot of things all at once, you right. know, to be able to um, to make that work. So I congratulate you um, for that. So um, just so that folks know. Um, this recording, along with the recordings of the other two um, award winners for 2022, um, remain on the SAN website so that people can review the, um, the very good work and um, we'll have the slide deck available as well. So all of the elements that went into this project will be um, there for you to review. And, and Mark, thank you for also offering to accept folks' questions um, sure. along the way. So that's a big help. So um, any final words that you'd like to share? No, I think we've covered a lot. And uh, uh, I, again, I, I sure appreciate that you got all recognizing us. Well, we're, we're very proud of your work and thank you for being so collegial um, to be able to share with the network. So that's a, that's, that's a very big um, uh, point that I wanna bring out is that you know, we, we are able to move forward because our network is so giving and sharing. So, so thanks again, Mark. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Thank you.